Hello 3D printing friends, today on the BV3D channel I want to show you this, a working, full-sized, 3D printed violin. Stick around and we'll get into it right after this. I'm Brian, and you are watching BV3D. This episode of the BV3D channel is brought to you in part by these awesome channel members. Hi, welcome back. Hey, if you're new here and you're wanting to learn about 3D printing, 3D modeling, and other 3D printing related stuff, start now by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. Okay, so today I want to show this off, a full-size 3D printed violin that you can actually play. Or at the very least, a full-size 3D printed violin that someone who knows how to play violin can play. Now, I haven't played a violin since fifth grade, so in a little bit, I'll be bringing in my resident violin expert, and she can show you how it's done. But first, let's talk a little bit about this instrument. This is version 5 of the Hova Lin, created by Hova Labs. Self-described as two Nebraska nerds currently living in the San Francisco Bay Area who use diverse backgrounds in art and science to build scalable projects, they've created, among other things, this cool 3D printable violin. You can download the STL files as a single piece body or a multi piece. The multi piece body comes in three parts a top, middle, and bottom chamber, and it has a pair of connectors to print which hold them together. The single piece body is just what it sounds like the entire chamber prints as one part. You'll need a printer with a 300 by 300 by 400 millimeter build volume to print the full 4 4 size violin body as a single piece. Whether you print the single piece body or the multi piece one, the other parts you need to print are the neck and the bridge. I downloaded the files for the 4 4 size violin with a single piece chamber with built in supports. Now, a quick note about the bridge the one on their site is quite a bit shorter than it needs to be. In fact, it's so short the strings wouldn't be held above the fingerboard on the neck. So I remixed it in Tinkercad to give it the right amount of tallness. And of course, links for everything are in the description. So I printed the body in Polymaker's Polylite PLA in black, and I printed it on the longer LK5 Pro. At the same time, I printed the neck in Printed Solids Jesse PLA, also in black, on my Franken printer that I call the Ender 3 Max V2 Pro. Printing the body with the recommended settings, 0.3 millimeter layer height, 30% infill, and two walls took a little over 32 hours to complete. The neck with the recommended settings of 0.2 millimeter layer height, 30% infill, and three walls took a little over 10 hours to print. And the bridge takes about an hour. In addition to printing these parts, you'll also need some non-printed hardware to complete it. You'll need a carbon fiber rod to serve as a spine to give strength to the violin. You'll need some geared 90 degree tuning pegs, and you'll need a set of violin strings. You'll also need a bow and some rosin if you don't have another violin hanging around that you can borrow them from. Now, since my resident violin expert has a violin, I didn't buy a bow or rosin. So not counting those, my total parts cost was about $45. Having printed and assembled the violin, I had my expert play it. Now you'll get to see and hear the violin actually being played more in just a little bit, but I gotta tell you, when I heard it being played, a few things happened. First, I was really impressed by how good it sounded. Second, my expert thought it was really cool, but the instrument was almost entirely 3D printed. Third, I decided that in addition to naming this video, I 3D printed a violin, the title would include the phrase, and it didn't suck. And fourth, I wanted to show the assembly process. So I ended up printing two complete violins and ordering more non-printed parts to complete it. On the second one, the neck and bridge are still printed in the black Jesse PLA, but the body is printed in Protopasta's Mermaid's Teal Metallic HTPLA. It's dark teal and it sparkles. It sparkles! And this is the one I'll be showing how to assemble. So to that end, these are the parts needed to assemble the complete violin. First, the printed parts the chamber, the neck, and the bridge. 
Then the non-printed parts, the carbon fiber rod, the strings, and the tuning pegs. And there are links in the description where you can find all these things. Putting the violin together is pretty simple. There's a dovetail joint to secure the neck and the chamber. Now, as printed, the part was a bit too tight, so I ended up having to use a file to get the fit just right. That process consisted of filing and test fitting and filing and test fitting a little at a time until the test fit, fit fit. And this is called sneaking up on the fit. If you've ever done woodworking, you'll know this is really a thing. And the idea is that in order to achieve the perfect fit between two parts, it's much better to repeatedly cut away a little bit of something than to cut away one big bit of something. Because if you cut off too much, you can't uncut it. So with the neck and the body parts dovetailing together nicely, insert the carbon fiber rod through the neck and into the body. The rod provides strength for the neck, so the strings don't slowly pull it out of shape over time. Next, install the tuning pegs. Use a pair of pliers to snap the screw tabs off the tuning pegs, otherwise they won't fit. They go in like this, and then the hex nuts hold them in place. I found that the neck was just a bit too thick to use the washers that came with the pegs, so if you need to skip them, skip them. The last printed part of the violin is the bridge, but the bridge doesn't get glued on or anything. It's actually held in place by the tension of the strings. Normally, with 3D printed parts, stringing is an undesirable thing, but in this case, strings are essential. It's time to string the violin. Now, violins have four strings. From the lowest note to the highest, these are G, D, A, and E. The set of strings I'm using are color-coded at the tuning peg end, so you know which string is which. Starting with the G string, feed the color-coded end of the string through this part of the body. Then, feed the other end of it through this part of the neck. The G string goes to this tuning peg, and the key needs to turn in this direction to tighten it. Due to the way the pegs are arranged, two of them will turn in one direction to tighten, and two will turn in the opposite direction to tighten. It's weird, but it works, and doing it this way keeps the strings coming out of the neck as straight as possible. Keep the string held reasonably tight with one hand while turning the key with the other. And when the string is close enough to the body to keep the bridge in place, slide the bridge in. The bridge generally sits right about here. Imagine a line between the notches on the scrolls, and that's where it goes. And you'll notice the bridge is taller on one side than the other. The taller side, that's where the G string goes. At this point, the string needs to be just tight enough to hold the bridge in place. Tuning comes later. The D string goes in next, and it goes to this tuning peg. Again, keep the string tight with your hand as you turn the key, following the straightest path from the neck to the peg until it can go against the bridge. Then install the A string. It goes to this tuning peg. Follow the same methodology as the first two. And lastly, the E string. Now this one is special. It's so thin that it has a little plastic sleeve on it to prevent it from cutting into the bridge. So when you've got the string tight enough to go against the bridge, make sure the sleeve is against the bridge as you tighten it. Now I am by no means a professional violin stringer, so I'm doing this the best way I know how. At this point, the violin, I'm sorry, the hovelin, is fully assembled and strung. And now you'll need to tune it. Now you can find various YouTube videos that will play the notes over and over so you can tune each string by ear, or you can use a tuning app on your phone, or you can use an actual instrument tuner. When tuning this instrument, I've noticed it's a lot like leveling the bed on a 3D printer. Tune the G string, then the D, then the A, and then the E. And then you tune the G string, and then the D, and then the A, and then the E. And then you tune the G string, the D, and the A, and the E. No, really, it's just like leveling the bed. As you adjust the tuning on one string, it affects the others. Now, I don't know if that's because the instrument itself is being flexed by the strings, or if it's just the strings coming to terms with being tightened. But eventually, the strings will hold their tuning, and then you can play the instrument. Or you can hand it to a violin expert to play it for you. Say hello to my talented offspring. Talented offspring, say hello to my 3D printing friends. Hello, 3D printing friends. You want to play something for us? How about some fiddle tunes? Sounds good.
That was great. Thanks. Okay, so what do you think of the violin? I think that it's a little bit tinnier of a sound that I'm used to hearing from my violins. And the string crossing isn't as good, but it's pretty good. It's a lot more than you would have expected from a 3D printed violin. Okay. This one actually has a bit of a richer, warmer tone, and it's a little bit easier to play for me. And so I don't know if it has to do with the filament or if it's just a slight change in the model maybe. No, well, it's the exact same model, just different filament. So different filaments have different tones to them. That's mm -hmm. kind of cool. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's the Hovalin, a 3D printed violin that doesn't suck. You want to help me do the outro? Yes. Okay. Ready? Okay. Well, well 3D, 3D printing, printing friends, that's, that's about all the time, time we have for this episode. episode. And now that we're at the end, end let's, let's go, go print, print something, something cool. cool. Hey, real quick before you go, I wanted to say thanks for being one of the super awesome people who sticks around all the way to the end, and thanks for all the likes, comments, and shares. And an especially big thanks to those who directly support what I do. You're all wonderful for doing that, and I really appreciate it. If you liked this episode, a thumbs up would be great. And if you'd like to help support the channel, check the description for ways you can do exactly that. And hey, if you haven't already subscribed, please do. It's absolutely free, and it's an excellent way to help keep me making these videos for you. Well. That's it for this one. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time here on the BV3D channel.